and here I alone. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. I want to be a doer of your word, not just a hearer of your word. I want to be a doer of your word. Make me a doer of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says, He sent His word and it delivered them. It says, Lord, send the word that my destiny is waiting for. Send it to me this hour. The word that will deliver me, the word that will set me free. Lord, send it to me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Send your word, oh Lord. Send your word. Send your word. Your word of deliverance. Send your word. Send your word. Your word that will deliver. Send your word. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Everlasting Father, King of glory, we want to thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We want to thank you, Lord, for your word that is ye and amen. Thank you, Lord, for this our moment of impact. We want to pray, Holy Spirit, that as we gather in your presence, minister to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Make us doer of your word and not just heir of your word. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to Hallelujah. pray for somebody that the word that your destiny has been waiting for, let that word be released to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Through this word, today receive your deliverance. Amen. Receive your healing. Amen. Receive your salvation. Amen. The power that will propel you, that will make you to fulfill destiny, as this word will be coming out, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name, settle. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Moment of Impact. This is the moment that we study the word of God to make impact in our lives so that we too will go out there and make impact in our generation. Once again, you are welcome online and on site. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In our last teaching, we are talking about putting our faith in action. The faith needs to be confessed. Faith, faith needs an action. It's an action word. It's not passive. So until you take action about what you believe, you won't see results. And we look at the book of Re uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the world were framed by the words of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So we tell us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith is tangible. But not in the physical realm. It is substance of, of, of the unseen. It is therefore is seen in a way in the spirit realm. So what you see in the spirit realm is what you, made, you speak out. You first of all see it in your spirit and you confess it with your mouth so that it can come to reality. So faith is the evidence of what you cannot see physically. The evidence is seen with the spiritual eyes. Are you listening to me? Yes, That's what we call faith. You are seeing it in the, with the spiritual eyes. Others around may not see it. So what you see with your spiritual eyes is what you confess. And I told us that many Christians are not fulfilling destiny today because they want to see everything with their physical eyes before they believe. They have the worldly language that see is believing. But in the kingdom, see is not believing you. You, you. you go into the unseen and bring the unseen to the seen, to be seen. Are you listening to me now? Yes, sir. So, 
when you fail to realize that the truth of the word of God is that you have to have the spiritual eyes to perceive spiritual things. And when you have spiritual eyes, then you'll be able to bring spiritual things into manifestation. So you must make sure that your faith goes beyond just seeing, is believing. Not what you see in the physical, but what you see in the spiritual. So faith is in the heart. That is, your heart is your spirit. The heart is the faith medium of operation. That is why we are talking about the, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. So your heart is what? The faith medium of operation. So if you are going to speak for the word of God, the substance of that word must first be in your heart. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. That word of faith you want to speak, you must have the substance. First of all, we are in your heart before it can become manifestation. So what you voice out with your mouth must undoubtedly agree with what is in your heart. So if you speak forth and you have no substance of what you say in your spirit, it means that your spirit is not in agreement with what is in your mouth. So you are there for releasing empty words. But if you keep saying like, I'm a success, I'm a success. And you cannot see success in your spirit or in your heart. You cannot be a success. The truth is that you must first see it in your heart before you, you confess it with your mouth. So that substance of what you hope for must first of all be seen in your spirit. So when you give it voice, it will produce the physical. Because you have first of all conceived it what? in the spirit. So many believers still don't believe that what they can speak a word and it will come to pass. They don't believe it. But you can speak a word and it come to pass. It's not for special people. You to have the authority as a born again child of God that you will speak and what you speak will come to reality. I told us in the last station that the headquarter of faith is what is the heart the heart is the headquarter of faith so as i've ever said faith is produced in you through the words of god as food nourishes the body and gives it strength so also does the word of god nourishes the heart and it produces faith so when the word of god is in us the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So let the word of God produce faith in your heart. Let the word of God be in you richly so that it will produce faith. This is the foundation that we need to fulfill destiny. This is the foundation that we need. And it goes further to tell us that a lot of believers are not fulfilling life and death because they are ashamed to demonstrate their faith publicly. And you know, faith has to be demonstrated in the open before you can get the desired results. I gave us the example of Jesus Christ when he commanded the apostles, the disciples, to go and fetch water into the 12 pots. So it looks ridiculous. That what is this saying? We need wine, and you ask us to go and fetch water. But he has to put it in action. That is faith. And they went, draw the water, and what did they get in return? They have wine. So he's not afraid to demonstrate it. And the public, when he saw the fig tree, he commanded the fig tree and said, it should wither, and it withered. So when they are coming, people saw that what he said, to the fig tree has come to pass. So don't be afraid to speak what you believe in the public. Don't be afraid of mockery of people. What will people say? If I say it and it did not happen. Well, that's one of the things that make us not to have results. If I say it and it doesn't happen. Nah, it's the word of God. Speak the word of God. Believe the word of God. Leave the rest for God. And what, see what God is going to do. Just is to is what is to believe. The Bible says, I believe, and so I do what I speak. So if Jesus Christ was taking 
of what people will say or what people will think, he will not have performed most of the miracles that he performed. Do you believe that? He will not have, yes. But just, just do it. This is what the word of God says. I'm standing on the word of God and based on what the word of God, I speak the word. So it is the word that God will back up with your faith. And I pray that Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we want to look at the two forces that will help us when we are taking action of faith. And I call it the forces or the power of zeal and confidence. The power of zeal and confidence. So to put your faith in action, in order to possess your possession, you need these two important powers or forces. And that is zeal and confidence. So let's look at the force of zeal. The force of zeal or the power of zeal. One of the key to possess your possession in life is the power of zeal. And what is zeal? Zeal has been defined as a driving force that propels one towards accomplishment in life. Anyone that accomplishes great results in life, they have zeal for it. So there is a driving force. A driving force must be in you. It is essential tools for performance. It is not just mere emotion. It is not just mere feeling. It is a tangible inner force, a drive that is required for any form of an achievement in life. Listen to me. Are you a businessman, a student, a pastor? You are in ministry. When your zeal die, then what you will desire will die. And when your zeal is no more there, you can't achieve great results. In fact, no result can be achieved. With the force of zeal, mountains will become plain ground. Obstacles will give way. One thing about zeal is that it pushes one to accomplish the impossible. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. When you have zeal for something, what other is saying that is not possible? Your zeal will prepare you that no, this thing is possible. Zeal is the force that pushes you on in spite of all odds. And when the zeal is there, no matter what is standing your way, you see the glorious end of your mission. You want to make sure that this thing, I must see the end, the end result. You see the glory in front of you and the zeal burns in you to bring it to manifestation. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Somebody you are listening to me, there is a glory be ahead of you. You have seen that glory ahead of you. You must not allow your zeal to die if you want to see that glory. If you want to touch that glory. If you want that glory to manifest. Don't allow your zeal to die. There is a zeal that makes a student to pass his exam. There is a zeal that makes a, a businesswoman to say, yes, I'm going to give in everything that it takes. But when the zeal is no more there, the success is not there. No result. Zeal motivates both steps. It is your zeal that makes you to take a both step. Even when people are saying that it's impossible. But because the zeal is born, there is an inner force in you. It puts off discouragement and it puts off distraction. See someone that has zeal for something, nothing can discourage him. And it will be focused. There will not be distraction. In the book of Psalm, David said in Psalm 69, David said in Psalm 69, verse 9. Psalm 69, verse 9. What did he say? For the seal of thy house has eaten me. The seal of thy house has eaten, me, eaten me up. up. Hallelujah. Amen. So what are you believing God for? What do you want God to do for you? The zeal of that thing must eat you up. The zeal of your ministry must eat, must eat you up. 
the zeal of your family sources must eat you up. As a student, the zeal of your academics, of passing, of being a first class must eat you up. The zeal of your house of what has eating me, eating me up. Zeal motivate you to take steps. It puts off discouragement and distraction. And zeal it guarantees steadfastness. It rejoices in hope. When you have zeal, you will still rejoice in hope. When, you are, when it seems that, that you are hopeless, when it seems that things are not happening, but your zeal will keep up, you keep your hope alive. Zeal is, the, is an inner fire that craves for resorts. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that someone is getting what I'm saying. This yes, is. sir. This zeal is an inner fire that craves for results. How many of us is craving for results? You must have zeal. Before you can get that result, the zeal must be there. Do you know, I found out in the Bible, that God himself has zeal. Isaiah chapter 37. This God operates with zeal. That is zeal in God. So anyone that wants to achieve success and want to make resort in this journey of faith, you must add zeal to your faith. Isaiah chapter 37 verse 32. God has zeal. For out of Jerusalem. Listen, for out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. Shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion. Those that escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. The zeal of the Lord of, the of, Lord of hosts shall, do, shall this. do this. Hallelujah. Amen. So that scripture is telling you that God has what? Zeal. What he says is going to do that. The zeal of the Lord of hosts. So your own zeal will do what you desire. Your zeal will bring out your belief to pass. Your zeal will make sure that that glory you are looking ahead of you, you have it. You have that trophy. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. So have zeal for what you desire. Let your zeal perform that thing that you are believing God for. Yes, Don't give up. Even in face of all oaths, God himself has zeal. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So your mission in life can only be accomplished when you have an inner fire burning in you. When you have an inner zeal. I pray for somebody. The fire in you will not die. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The zeal in you will not, burn, will not die. So there is a fire that will be burning through your own for you to have the desired results. Are you listening to me, somebody? Yes, sir. There is a this. When you see someone that is zealous, he will not just fold his hands. When you see someone that is zealous, he will not believe that this thing is impossible. He wants to make sure that despite every oath, he will force ahead to make sure that he is not discouraged. People may come to discourage, but he will not be discouraged. I will not allow anything to distract him. He will be focused. Hear what this man said, Isaac Watts, who invented electricity. As the word with electricity was said to have been asked how many times he had failed before eventually coming up with this, with his desired results. He wanted to bring out electricity and he failed many times. And they asked him, How many times did you fail? Here is his reply. He said, He didn't fail once, but only discovered. How many ways it will not work? That is zeal. What people see as failure to him is not what? It's not failure. But it's what? A lesson. He's just seen how many ways that it will not work. And until he find the way, he did not stop. There are many people, they have failed many times. And because there is no more zeal, they give up. They give up their assignments. They give up their mandate. And they are saying that this thing cannot work. I've tried, I've tried. This guy tried for 99 times. Yet, he continued. Somebody said, like I said, said he wrote to Waek. You'll be surprised. Sir. 15 times. What is he? 15 times. Yes. He has become regular 
customer. If the Z was not there, it would have stopped. He said, no, I must pass this thing. I must, be, I must go to university. He was writing. He will write Waik. He will write Neko. He will write, call it eh? GC. And he sat down for 15 times. And eventually, he made it. If that Z was not there, he would have been a, you know, a dropout from secondary school. And where he was, where he is right now, he wouldn't have been there. Because they, he needs something. He needs that certificate. So you two don't give up no matter what. No matter what. So what is your own mission? I'm asking, what is your mission in life? What is the joy you expect at the end of it? Listen, everything that you are doing, that is a joy at the end of it. One thing that keeps me going in ministry is the joy at the end of it. That if I do it well and I'm faithful, I have a crown waiting for me. The joy at the end of it. In ministry, you don't get all the luxuries. You don't get money. You pass through pain. Most of the time, people see the glory and they don't see the pain. But before the glory appears, you have passed through a lot of pain, a lot of headache that people don't know, that people don't see. Even when they are still seeing glory, they don't know what you are even passing through. Many people don't know that times we pastors, we pray, Lord, let me, can you allow me to have a leave from this, to just take a leave from this work, maybe for five years. But you don't know. Even the minister that you call successful ministers, they have their own challenges. But what keeps on going is what? Is the joy that is ahead of it. So every one of us, you must fix your eyes on your glorious end. Are you listening to me? Yes, Are you a businesswoman, a, a, a housewife, a student? Fix your eyes on your glorious end, not what you are experiencing now. That is a joy ahead of you. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. So you should not be discouraged. You should not allow your zeal to die. Zeal never accept failure. Anyone that is zealous, you won't accept failure, no matter what. Yes. It sees every obstacle. Zeal, we see every obstacle at what? A stepping stone. See that thing that seems like failure as a what? As a stepping stone. And say, I will not give up. If I fail this time, I won't fail next time. And I achieve it, I will not stop. So see every obstacle as a stepping stone. Stones to the anticipated results. So what I'm saying in essence is that to our faith, let us add zeal. And I want to say, as you are adding zeal to your faith, I can see you rising up and fulfilling Amen. destiny. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. With that zeal burning inside you, no power can stop you. Amen. No forces can stop you. Amen. The only one that can stop you is yourself. If you cannot be stopped, you cannot be quenched. So you must, of a necessity, hand up being a star. Let's always say, I will be a star. I will be a star. In the name of Jesus. In the name of so Jesus. So what do you want to become? Have zeal. Have zeal. Don't give up. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't give up. You fix your eyes at the glorious end. You fix your eyes. If I can do it diligently, if I can put more effort, ah, this is going to be the result for me. If I can put in more, more, more zeal, more zeal, more fire into this work, oh, what is going to be? Do you know many of us God has committed some great things into our hands. And at times, because we met some with some obstacles and we went with some challenges, we just give up. You gave up because the, your zeal for that thing has died. Many of us zeal for evangelism have died. Many of us zeal for, the, for, the, for reading the word of God has died. Many of us, even the assignment, the work you are doing, your business, you have no more zeal. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will find up that zeal in you. Amen. The fire will, will come afresh upon you. Amen. Will burn through you. Amen. You will not give up. Amen. You will not be discouraged. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So the force of zeal is very important. 
for our faith to work, for we to possess our possession. Let's look at the second force or the second power that our faith requires. Another force you need to add to your faith is the power of confidence. Power of confidence. This is like a two-edged sword. A complete trust or belief in yourself. Power of confidence. When you are not sure of yourself and demonstrate a lack of confidence, people will step on you. I listen to me, somebody. You must have confidence in yourself. Have confidence in yourself that you are able, that you can do it. Have confidence in yourself that you are not a failure. You don't display inferiority complex. If you demonstrate lack of confidence in yourself, people begin to step on you and you will be treated as underlying. You know what they call underlying? Like foot marks. Confidence demonstrates and commands authority. People will ah, he has confidence in himself. See the way he's talking. See the way he carries himself. We live in the world where the confidence reign and the fearful are slaves. Let me write it again. Write it down. We live in the world where the confidence, those that are confident reigns. And the fearful, they are slaves. So, in other words, if you are not confident in yourself, you will be slave to the people that are confident. So, it is people that have confidence that reigns. Look at what the scripture says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Paul says, being confident of this very thing. Yes, have you seen it? Philippians 1 verse 6. Be confidence of this very thing. See, be confidence of this very thing. That he which have begun. That he which have begun. A good work in you. A good work in you. We perform it. We perform it. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to be confidence of this thing. Be confidence of yourself. Be confident that there is something that God has given to you that he has not given to any other person. Have this confidence that you are a unique person. You are different. You carry glory. You carry substance. You are valuable. You are not a waste. So to excel and to make exploit in life, you must overcome your fear. What did I say? Overcome your fear. What is making you afraid? You must overcome it. That is when you can excel. That is when you can make it. The worst enemy of confidence is inferiority complex. And this is what many carry around. And they have become a waste to their generation. Yes, many people carry this inferiority complex about. They look at themselves that they are nothing. They can't do anything. They look at them that they don't carry weight. They look at themselves and see that they have no value. And if you are carrying that inferiority complex about, you are going to be a waste to generation. You won't add anything to the world. But don't look at yourself that you are a waste, that you don't have value. Tell yourself, say, I have value. Say, I can do it. I can do it. If somebody is shining, if somebody is making it, don't look at, don't look down your, on yourself. That look at this one. He's shining more than me. He's shining his own shine. You do, will do what? You will shine your shine. Let's always say I will shine my shine. I will shine my shine. So yeah. don't allow anyone to make you feel inferior. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Don't allow anyone to put inferiority complex in you. Build up your faith in God. Have confidence in yourself. This is very important. Have confidence in yourself. A man of faith is a man of confidence. He believes in himself. He believes in himself. So, and every child of God will see yourself that you are peculiar. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood. A peculiar people. We have been called to do what? To show forth the glory of God who has called us. Let someone say, I'm special. I'm special. There is no, there is no 
There is no other person like me. There's no other person like me. Do you know that your fingerprint is different? Your high list is different. So you have something better than other people. So don't look down on yourself. Don't say that you can't make it. Don't say that you are a failure. Don't say that somebody is better than you. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you see yourself and feel inferior and you see other people better than you, it is then that you 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 you'll be you be you'll be, you'll be mix, missing it and you'll not be able to achieve destiny. Every child of God, we are peculiar. We have God. God is greater than the devil. The Bible says, He that is in us is greater than he that is in the, in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So we must walk in the might of the power that is in us and nothing will rub up of our confidence. Have you listened to me? Yes, that is a power in me. That is a power in you. So when we are talking about faith, commanding the word of God, have confidence in yourself that as I speak, I speak like a God. The power of God is in me. Heaven and earth will obey me when I speak. Because I'm peculiar. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a, I'm a peculiar person. I carry power. I carry authority. Hallelujah. Amen. So when a man's confidence is broken, his heart is broken. Write it down. When your confidence is broken, your heart is broken. And if his heart is broken, then he's broken and he's a defeated person. So anyone that his heart is broken, his life is broken. I will be a defeated person. So don't allow your confidence to be broken. Every man of exploit in the Bible, go and check it in the Bible. Every man that makes exploit in the Bible, all these people, they were men of outstanding confidence. People of outstanding confidence. Men with the heart of lions. Look at the lineup. Let's look at the lineup of the people of faith in the, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at them. Men of confidence. Men that, they, that don't give up. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35, the Bible told us that every one of us we should not cast away our confidence because it has what? A great recompense of reward. Can we look at those chronicles of the patriarchs of faith in Hebrews 11, from verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yes. The evidence of things not seen. Uh -huh. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Can you see? The elders obtain a good report, yes. True faith will understand that the words were framed by the word of God. Uh -huh. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Oh, yes. By faith. By faith. Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice that came. Yes. By which... He obtained witness that he was righteous. Can you see? God testified of his gifts. Uh -huh. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Yeah, he's though he's dead, but he's still speaking. Because he demonstrated faith, confidence in himself. Yes? By faith. By faith. Enoch was translated uh -huh. that he should not see death. Uh -huh. And was not found. Can you see that? These are people of faith. People that have confidence in themselves and have confidence in God. So, you can continue to read that. See how these people of faith, how they have confidence in themselves, how they have got confidence in God, and how they receive great reward. Confidence produces great rewards. And, that's great, and that makes men. It makes great men. So, there is no greatness without confidence. Write it down. No greatness without what? Confidence. Confidence is the force behind every breakthrough. If you say anyone that has breakthrough, he has confidence. So don't take away your confidence. Don't throw away your confidence. The confidence that you have in yourself. You must have that confidence in yourself that you are different, you are real, you are peculiar. And I see somebody you are rising from this teaching Amen. to make an invention. Amen. You are going to do what no other people have done. Amen. Amen. How many of us believe that there are still new things under heaven? Some people say that there is no new thing. There are new things. And that new thing that have not surfaced under this heaven is coming through you. Amen. It's coming through your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
say new thing will come through me. New thing will come through me. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. In fact, I look into the into this word of IT, this word of ITC. Now, everything is on is has been uh, digitalized, and we see different cup, different kinds of apps coming up. People are producing apps now. Somebody produces Facebook, isn't it? Yes, and before you know it, another person now say Facebook is making it. What do you say? In that person, another what? TikTok. That is TikTok. That is WhatsApp. Isn't it? Apart from WhatsApp, that is another what they call it now. Eh? That is Twitter. Everybody was just bringing out new thing, new thing, new thing. That is Zoom. Now that is Instagram. That is Zoom now. That is uh, you can also that is also Google whatever video. You don't want to use. You can use your WhatsApp and you'll be seeing people. You talk to them. You can see as conference call. People are bringing in ideas, and every one of them is shining on their own. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. So don't say there is no new thing. There is a new thing that is coming through you. There is new thing that is coming through me. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say new thing is coming through me. New thing is coming through me. Say I carry new thing. I carry new thing. That no other people have carried. That no other people have carried. It's in me. It's in me. And I will give back to it. And I will give back to it. So have confidence in yourself. Have zeal. Have confidence. So the second phase of confidence, apart from having confidence in yourself, is to have confidence in God. Because when I say have confidence in yourself, it's good. But you must also have confidence in God. But first of all, you have confidence in yourself. Then the second thing is have confidence in God. The truth about confidence is that you don't only believe in yourself alone. You also trust or believe in another man's ability. And as a believer, we believe in the ability of God. Are you listening to me? As a child of God, the Bible has warned us that we should not put our confidence in man. Thus says the Lord, cause be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. That's what the scripture says. So the basis of our confidence should not be in any man, but in who? In God. So if you will be strong in the Lord, and be confident in his ability to back up what you say. You will see yourself fulfilling destiny. Have confidence in God. Have confidence in, your, in his word. And have confidence in yourself. So you begin to see results. As a child of God, you must be confident in every situation you find yourself. Your words and your actions must, pop, must portray confidence. What did I say? Your words, your actions must show confidence. When you talk, people must see that, yes, you are speaking with boldness. When you, when you take action, this is a, 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 a bold action. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I remember when we just started this ministry and we started in a small place and we want to enlarge. Hallelujah. Amen. Where we are is not enough for us. We want to enlarge. That very day after the service, I took a step, a step of faith, a step of action. And I went out, measured the land. And I said, one, two, three, four. And I take some step and I stopped. At that time, nothing, no money, nothing. We are just taking a step of faith. We have confidence in God, have confidence in ourselves, and we are moving on. And we have zeal. We have zeal. Do you know that same week, without nothing, all the material needed, God supply. Hallelujah. God supply. Materials worth of 500,000. Then, I'm talking about almost 12 years ago now. Then, God supply. But if we did not have confidence and zeal, if you not take that step, I you listen to me, yes, we won't sir. get results. So you two need to take step on what you are believing God for. Have confidence in yourself, have confidence in God, and have zeal. So these are the two forces of confidence. Yourself and God. You are the one to have confidence in yourself. 
to act and speak boldly and take action, both action, both step. And the duty of God is to confirm what you say. The duty of God is to back you up when you take step. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. But if you don't take step, you don't take action, God will not, will not take any step. The Bible says, this sign shall follow those who believe. Eh? This sign, there is a sign that follows you when you believe. And I told her, you don't only believe, you take action for what you, uh, what you believe. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So, confidence in the word of God is what makes you a winner. What makes you a winner? Confidence, confidence in the word of God. It is the overcomer slogan. It is the prime mover for exploits. Get hold of confidence from God and his word and cast it not away. Bible says, for it has a good, great reward, a great recompense of reward. So anyone that has confidence, confidence in God, confidence in yourself, you see yourself performing wonders. Have you listened to me? Yes, sir. Yes. I see us doing something great this season. Amen. Amen. I see somebody, Amen. you are going to move from where you are yes. to where you ought to be. Amen. In Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. When you discover that where you are, is too straight for you. Like the sons of the prophets, they told the master, where we are is too straight for us. We need a larger place. We need, we got to enlarge. And they took the steps. Isn't it? They have confidence there. They take the bold step. They went to borrow even what they don't have. They have confidence that what they borrow, they were able to keep to pay back. So please go and take steps. Don't allow that zeal to, 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 to go down in you. Somebody right now, maybe because of the situation of Nigeria or what is happening globally, it's as if they have pour, it has poured cold water on your, on your heart. What you want to do before, you don't want to do it again. Or what God has called you to do, you say, let me just give up. I will not put more efforts. I will not kill myself. After all, uh, this world, we brought nothing and we are taking nothing. If you have that kind of idea, you, 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 you won't achieve success in life. And I told us when I started this teaching, moment of impact is for us not to come into this world like just a snake that passed through the rock without making impact. They must see your mark. They must know that somebody came to this world. How you listen to me? They must know that you came to this world and you do what? You conquer. Amen, somebody. So do you have confidence in yourself? Do you have zeal? Do you have something that other people don't have? Go for it and God will back you up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So this is how we are going to end to this teaching. There is any question have questions, those of us watching online, you can send it right now. Just type in your questions. And those of us on site, there's any questions? Any questions? Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to rise up and ask for any questions. I want you to sing this song as we pray together. That song says, I have confidence in you, Jesus. I have confidence in you any time, any day. I have confidence in you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I have confidence in you any time, any day. I have confidence in you, hey, Jehovah. I have confidence in you, hey, Jesus. I have confidence in you any time, any day. I have confidence in you. Jehovah. I have confidence.
happy days in you Jesus I have confidence in you anytime any day I have confidence in you Jehovah Amen I want somebody to pray, Lord, the zeal in me that is dying, wake it up. Wake up my zeal for my mandates. Wake up my zeal for the assignment you have given to me. I will not die a failure. I will not die distracted. I will not die distracted. I will not die frustrated. I will not die frustrated. Say, oh Lord, wake up my zeal. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Lord, wake up. This zeal in me. Wake up, I see. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, this zeal. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. My faith. Looks up to thee, thou lap of Calvary, Savior divine. Oh, yeah, the while I pray, take all my gifts await oh let me from this day be your somebody you need to pray Lord fan up my faith my faith will not die that man, Jesus said, do you believe? Say, yes, Lord, I believe. Help my heart believe. Say, Holy Spirit divine. Holy Spirit divine. Fan my faith. My faith in you will not die. My faith in you will not die. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By your faith, I make a command. My, by faith, I make a like command. Like the patriarch of faith, oh Lord, help me. Like the patriarch of faith, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name oh of Lord, Jesus. Oh Lord, help me like the patriarch of oh faith. Lord, make I will not lose my faith. In I will not lose my faith. I will not lose confidence in myself. I will not lose confidence in myself. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give me more confidence oh in Lord, myself. My Father, give me more confidence. Oh Lord. Give me more boldness. Give me more boldness. Oh more boldness. More confidence. In the name myself. of Jesus. Oh Lord, in, name of in Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Amen. I want you to cast out every spirit of inferiority complex. That spirit telling you are inferior. That you are a lady. You are a woman. Or that say that you don't have helpers. That say you can't do it. Say every spirit of inferiority complex. Every spirit of inferiority complex. I cast it out today. I cast it out today. In the name of Jesus. Cast it out of your head. Every spirit of inferiority complex. Every spirit of inferiority complex. I cast out of my life in the name of Jesus. I reject you. Spirit of inferiority complex. I cast you out. I cast you out. I reject you in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are not my portion. I cast you out. You are not my portion in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. Every spirit of inferiority complex. Every inferiority complex. Out. In out. the name of Jesus, spirit of infinity complex, out of my life, out of my life, in the name of Jesus, I cast out of my life, in the name of Jesus, hey. spirit of infinity complex, I cast you out in the name of the Father, who is with in Jesus, in Jesus, out of my life, in the name of Jesus, mighty name we pray, amen, I want everyone to begin to remind God about your vision, your mission in life, your mandate, and say, Lord, help me. Help me. help me to fulfill this vision. This assignment you are giving to me. This assignment you are giving to me. Lord, give me the faith to oh, carry it on. Give me the zeal. Oh, Lord, give me, give the, me the confidence. Oh, Lord, give me the confidence. This mandate will not die in my this hand. Mandate will not die in this my vision hand. will not die in this my hand. Will not die in Begin my to hand. tell your most high God. Oh, no, no, tell no, God no, about the vision, about the mandate, about the work. This vision will not die. You have called me into this ministry lord you will help me in the name of jesus i receive new zeal 
new confidence, new power, new boldness to make impact in this generation, to make exploits, to do a new thing that nobody has ever done, to make a mark, to make a mark. I must make a mark. I must make a mark. Hey, I must make an impact. In Jesus' name we pray. I will make an impact. I will make an impact. Joseph make an impact. Hey. I will make an impact. Amen. Amen. How many of us also make an impact? Joseph made an impact. Isaac make an impact. Abraham make impact. You two will make an impact. Amen. Amen. Sing that song with me. I will make an impact. Amen. I will make an impact. Joseph make an impact. Hey, I will make an You will make an impact I will make an impact I will make it yeah, I will make an impact Jesus make impact Jesus make an impact I will make an impact I will make an impact Paul make an impact Hey, I made an impact. Hey, I will make an impact. What do you say? I will make an impact. I will make an impact. I will make an impact. In the name of Jesus, I make an impact. Hey, I Amen. I prophesy upon you, I speak upon your life, and I speak upon your destiny, I speak upon my life, upon my Amen. destiny. That which God has ordained us for, that assignment that heaven has given unto us, grace and power to fulfill it, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a gift inside you. Nobody carry that gift. And through that gift, God wants you to make impact. Let that gift begin to manifest now. Amen. Let it manifest now. Amen. What you carry that will bring gain to you, that will bring profits to you, that has a great recompense of reward, let it begin to manifest in the name of Amen. Jesus. What I carry, what you carry, that will bring profit to the kingdom of God and that will make heaven to rejoice because of us. I pray for that zeal, for that confidence to bring it to limelight. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every power that may want to stand against us or whatever wants to bring discouragement and frustration, let them be arrested in the name of Amen. Jesus. We are arrested in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for you and I pray for myself that in life we will make impact. Amen. We fulfill destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, bless every Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Set you. If you know you are blessed, this message, I want you to share this message. I want you to let other people your loved one, hear about this message. And I want to tell you that as you propagate the gospel, God will propagate and advertise your glory. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you with the love of God. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.